So wonderful, you know, conversation to warm us up and a wonderful introduction uh, to our keynote speaker, Kurt Vandenberg. Kurt was appointed Director General of DG Klima on 16 January of this year. Until then, he was uh, the Green Deal and Health Advisor to President uh, Ursula von der Leyen since December 1, 2019. Uh, he joined the cabinet and the president uh, coming from the DG Research and Innovation, where he was director for policy and programming since February 2016, and acting director for research and innovation outreach um, since June 2019. Before that, he was director of climate action and resource efficiency at DG Research and Innovation since July 2013. Kurt joined the European Commission in 1996 as coordinator uh, of the Commission's Intermodal Transport Task Force uh, and the Transport Research Program. Uh, before entering the Commission, Kurt worked for four years as a manager at Ernst & Young Association Management, where he set up, managed, and represented international trade associations. He has an academic uh, background, obtaining a degree in public and international affairs, uh, and a Master of Art degree in international relations from John Hopkins University School of Advanced International Studies, uh, both in Italy and in Washington, D.C. in the United States. So um, with that, Kurt, we are honored uh, and privileged to have you as our speaker today, and please, our, our attention is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Jared, for this very kind introduction. Thank you for inviting me here today. I'm really happy to be here and to see a full room. Um, Daniel Kitscher, my uh, go-to colleague in DG Klima for CCS, uh, briefed me on the very interesting discussion you've just had. Uh, so this is a, an exciting area of policy development, uh, one that is not only exciting, but also one that uh, we need uh, for the future. Um, carbon capture and storage has gained a lot of attention uh, this year in the European institutions, and well-deserved attention too, I must say. Our Fit for 55 package is setting the conditions for a, a deep transformation of our economy, um, including the hard-to-abate industry uh, sectors. Um, the main climate proposals uh, have been agreed at record speed uh, by the European institutions and have now been published in the official journal. And this includes, as you mentioned, uh, Jared, the revised uh, emission trading uh, directive, which creates strong incentives to avoid emissions, but also to capture them. Um, it incentivizes uh, companies to capture emissions and store them geologically instead of emitting CO2 and to avoid surrendering allowances. Um, also, transport of CO2 is now possible in the EU with all transport modes, not just uh, with uh, pipelines. At the same time, uh, the energy crisis caused by the dreadful Re Russian attack on uh, Ukraine has um, exposed Europe to the drawbacks of dependency on fossil um, energy. Hence, we really need to accelerate efforts to save energy and roll out renewables very rapidly and massively at scale, as we have proposed in our Repower EU plan. Um, with the emission trading system, we are not only uh, reducing, uh, in, on a market-based principle, the emissions uh, from our industry and our economy, um, we're also generating resources. Um, last year alone, in 2022, the ETS system generated 38 billion euros of revenues uh, for the European Union and its uh, member states. And what we're doing with these revenues is to reinvest them in industrial innovation and in social policies. And, and one important uh, novelty of the ETS directive that we have revised is that it now clearly says that 100% of these revenues need to be reinvested in energy uh, and climate. And a part of these uh, revenues go to our ETS Innovation Fund, uh, which we run uh, from uh, DG Klima. And with this Innovation Fund, we are supporting the commercial demonstration of innovative low-carbon uh, technologies. And I must say we have unprecedented demand uh, for funding in this uh, space. Um, in the context of Repower EU, we have strengthened our efforts uh, to support 
decarbonization. The budget of the most recent large-scale call was doubled to 3 billion euros, and we intend to keep that rhythm in the years uh, to come, that rhythm and that scale. Um, more than ever, we believe we need to focus on decarbonizing industry, as every call so far has uh, been largely oversubscribed, showing the big needs uh, of industry. Each time we open a call, we see a big number of projects with CCS components uh, applying. Um, and I, we are now working on the evaluation of the large-scale uh, call that closed in March, and we will announce the results uh, in uh, July. Uh, CCS and Carbon Capture and Use, CCU, um, are for us strategic climate mitigation technologies. Uh, these are strategic technologies uh, for the EU uh, economy. Um, in the EU and for the EU, these technologies will be of key importance to achieve uh, climate neutrality. This is why we at DigiClima are very happy uh, that earlier this year we have seen the first actual cross-border CCS value chain in action, um, and this may have been touched upon by the panel. Uh, CO2 captured in Belgium was transported by ship from the port of Antwerp Bruges to the Green Sand project in Denmark, um, and there it was successfully stored in an offshore storage uh, site under the Danish part of uh, the North Sea. We know this is a project in test phase, um, but we consider it significant because it shows how member states can and should cooperate uh, on CCS and CECU. Denmark and the Netherlands, as well as uh, Norway, um, lead the way in the EU, including by helping industries to capture their emissions. Um, as you are surely aware, and certainly uh, Jared is more than anyone else, um, we in Europe are not the only ones uh, to engage in CCS and to support CCS. The United States have extended their tax credit for the storage of uh, CO2. Um, this rewards companies with $85 uh, per tonne of CO2 captured. Um, this is not a publicity uh, for the IRA. Uh, this is purely a piece of uh, information. Um, and to say that in the EU uh, we already have an economic uh, incentive for installations covered by your ETS uh, system to invest in capturing CO2 and storing it uh, permanently. However, any industry that wants to do this relies, of course, on the availability of storage uh, sites. Um, today, as we see it, the single largest bottleneck for capture and storage investments is the operational availability of CO2 storage sites uh, in Europe. Um, and this is why the European Commission has proposed a legal EU target for CO2 storage capacity as part of the Net Zero Industry Act that uh, Jared was referring to. This target does not force member states to develop storage sites if they don't want to, um, but with the Net Zero Industry Act, um, member states can recognize and support net zero strategic projects for CO2 storage with permitting acceleration where they need them for their um, industry. On the demand side, um, industry sources project uh, to our knowledge a potential demand for storage of up to 80 million tons of CO2 per year by 2030. However, developments on the supply side are progressing much uh, slower. So far in the EU, any operational uh, CO2 injection capacity has been developed only after contracting with emitters at least the initial injection capacity with a 10 to 15 years contract uh, duration. As this takes place years before the first CO2 molecules would even travel, de facto this means that emitters are sharing the commercial risks of storage uh, operators. Um, in addition, the latest information from Norway and the Netherlands shows that several companies are filing competing applications for new CO2 storage exploration uh, permits. So the target proposed by the Commission responds to 
a competitive race to the market, uh, mostly driven by oil and gas operators, even before strategic uh, storage capacity is geologically proven and any operational injection capacity is available on the market in the EU. The oil and gas producing industry, we believe, has both the means and the resources to develop uh, geological CO2 <coughs> storage uh, sites. And that's why we have proposed in the Net Zero Industry Act that they should establish an industrial scale CO2 storage capacity of 50 million tonnes per year in the European Union by 2030. Early movers that want to capture emissions that would otherwise reach the atmosphere should not bear the commercial risks of building geological uh, storage sites. So it's really about connecting the different operators, as uh, Jared uh, was saying. By being able to annually store 50 million tonnes of CO2, we believe we will unlock capture investments in hard-to-abate uh, industries. The injection capacity can serve industrial carbon removals that aim to store CO2 permanently. We now need to create a market for first movers in capture, uh, storage and use of CO2. And it is starting. Uh, the first offshore CO2 storage uh, sites are developing, as we know, in the North Sea region. And EU emitters are negotiating storage uh, contracts. <laughs> To loca locate the demand, we have asked uh, member states to update their national energy and climate plans. These are an important tool in our European climate action. Uh, they are the implementation instrument for member states. Um, we are expecting from member states updated draft national energy climate plans by this summer which we will then review together with them so that they have finalized uh, NECPs by summer 2024. And um, we're asking the member states to include these demands and availability of storage sites in their national and energy climate plans so that the whole of Europe has a good overview of what is needed and what is available. This should include estimating both CO2 capture needs in industry as well as geological CO2 storage uh, potential in the subsoil. In the end, it is also an opportunity for this industry to play a fundamental role in decarbonizing our industry for the years uh, to come. The storage, uh, the storage target um, is only the first, albeit a very strategic part of a union strategy to establish by 2030 a single market for CO2 transport, utilization and storage services that can serve industrial carbon management uh, solutions. Before the end of this year, we will propose a strategy that will translate the role assigned to CCS, CCU and industrial carbon uh, removals into a blueprint for an industrial carbon management value chain in uh, the EU. In addition to storage sites and CO2 transport infrastructures, we are now looking uh, with Daniel and colleagues in other services of the Commission in two broader aspects, uh, such as carbon neutral industrial use, including the replacement of fossil feedstocks and chemicals, um, but also an emerging carbon dioxide removal industry to create an economic case for negative uh, emissions, which we know we will need big time in the future in Europe. Last week, we have launched a public consultation that will be open until the end uh, of August, and we invite you to give us your feedback. We really need it, and we value it uh, great, greatly. As you know, in the EU, we have since 2009 the legal framework in place uh, to ensure that CO2 is stored safely and permanently underground, both offshore and on land. And as the Danish colleague was saying, this is of capital importance to have the public acceptance and confidence uh, in this uh, area. Um, for us, um, this is therefore an essential prerequisite to using CCS as a climate solution. But we want to keep our framework uh, up to date. 
Um, we are therefore revising the Commission's CCS directive guidance documents uh, to help storage developers and permitting authorities to benefit from the latest uh, experience. If you want to know more, um, please register to our public consultation workshop uh, that will take place on the 11th of July in Brussels and you'll find all the links on the DG Klima uh, website. As I mentioned, um, with the ETS uh, Innovation Fund, we are funding CCS in particular in those energy intensive industries where other alternatives for decarbonization do not yet exist, uh, like in the cement and chemicals industries that were also mentioned uh, before. We estimate that on a basis of a price of carbon at around 75 euros per tonne of CO2, we will have about 40 billion euros of support over the next uh, 10 years um, in the Innovation Fund. And we will use this to contribute uh, greatly to scaling up breakthrough low carbon technologies, including CCS and CCU. We are now working to increase the leverage of the Innovation Fund by not limiting the funding only to uh, what we have available in the Innovation Fund, but also to make it very attractive and easy for member states to come in and use the resources they have also through revenues from the ETS so that the member states pick up and fund projects that we can't fund because of lack of money projects that are of interest to their territory. And uh, we hope to make announcements on this uh, not later than uh, next week. After our first calls, we are already supporting projects that jointly will capture 4.6 million tonnes of CO2 per year uh, for geological storage. And this is just a start. Uh, by 2030, 30 projects in preparation across Europe can deliver about 50 million tons of CO2. But we know that these projects will not be enough. Uh, we will need at least six times more CO2 to be stored per year by 2050 to reach uh, climate uh, neutrality. Ladies and gentlemen, in the EU, um, I believe it's fair to say that we have delivered an unprecedented number of legislative pieces in the past uh, two years. Um, some are saying it's too much, uh, stop it. Uh, we don't have the luxury of stopping when we look at the scientific evidence uh, of climate uh, change. Um, we have tried to give concrete targets and pathways um, and the tools and funding to realize them uh, to our industry and beyond. Um, and now, of course, what matters is that we put all this uh, in practice. Um, pathways and objectives are now quite clear until 2030, and we are now looking into what future climate policies uh, should look like. Um, as a next step, the Commission will recommend um, early next year, as uh, after the global stock take in Dubai, um, an intermediate climate target for 2040, on the path to climate neutrality by 2050, with a view to integrate a 2040 target in the European climate law afterwards. This is not about further increasing the climate ambition for Europe. This is really about implementing what is already agreed in the European climate law, that we need to achieve climate neutrality by 2050. And you may have seen that earlier today, or a European scientific board on climate change has published its opinion, uh, its advice to the European Commission um, for a 2040 target. Um, a very complex story uh, with lots of scenarios that have been studied, uh, but what the scientific advisors uh, propose for 2040 is a target of 90 to 95 percent CO2 reduction by 2040. They also stress very importantly, that uh, carbon removals will have to play a fundamental role if we want to achieve uh, these ambitious uh, targets. So we have a lot of work uh, ahead of us. I also would like to say in conclusion that I think uh, both the EU and the US have had a moment of uh, reckoning. Uh, we're all 
facing the same climate crisis and uh, facing the harsh reality of CO2 emissions that keep rising at global level, while the effects of uh, climate change are getting uh, more prominent uh, and more real every day. And we feel it uh, also here in Brussels very personally. Our actions and industrial policies, both on the US and the EU side, um, they are deeply rooted in their respective political and historical context, but they have the same objective, uh, to make sure that competitiveness and low carbon go hand in hand and that we fight actively the climate crisis by reducing our emissions um, in all sectors. So to conclude, I would like to leave you with three main messages. First, CCS is a strategic net zero technology for the EU, no doubt about this. Secondly, for us, the missing option, this is the missing option to the many tools that we need uh, to decarbonize industry. And thirdly, as a message also to you, we need entrepreneurial spirit and risk-taking capital investment in order to build the infrastructure. Um, we count on you, uh, and all the distinguished representatives in this room, you can also count on us to make sure that the regulatory and funding framework is in place uh, to make these investments happening. Thank you very much.